Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Great to be here. So, uh, so I'm not married, never been married. People ask me, Dan, why are you not married? Why have you never been married? I'll tell you why. Because I have to be sold on stuff. And, and uh, people aren't selling marriage as an institution. I talk to married people all the time. I ask them, how do you like being married? You know what I'm not hearing? Enthusiasm. <laughs> at best, at best, they're like, so far, so good. <laughs> but I ask people, how do you like the new iPhone? They're like, dude, oh my God. <laughs> That's why I'm not married, but I'm considering the new iPhone. There's a lot of commercials on TV right now. You see these prescription drug commercials. They've been on TV for a few years. Uh, I don't understand this. Apparently, we're supposed to tell our doctors what to prescribe for us. That's the new thing. Like, I saw the commercial for Prevacid, and at the end of the commercial, it says, ask your doctor about Prevacid. And I'm thinking, shouldn't your doctor know about Prevacid? <laughs> How's that my job? What, do you walk into your doctor's office? Yeah, there's nothing we can do for you. Well, what about Prevacid? But well, geez, you know, you're right, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Now, <laughs> let me write your prescription. Now, how many milligrams is good that it say in the commercial? <laughs> they keep coming out with new pills for stuff. I hope they never come out with a pill to cure baldness, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm not bald. <laughs> and I don't want those bald people catching up to me. I don't want to lose my hair advantage. If some bald guy can take a pill and grow a full head of hair, where does that leave me? Then the woman is thinking, well, they both have hair. I guess I'll just go with the guy that doesn't live with his mother. <laughs> you know who called me the other day? I got a call from New York University where I went to school. They called me up looking for alumni donations. Anybody ever get a call from where they went to school looking for money? That's what they do. They call me up, they're like, we need more money. I'm like, what'd you do with the money I gave you? <laughs> I thought I already paid you people. And nobody, nobody else does business like that. You don't go to a restaurant and then they call you up years later. They say, yeah, we're renovating the kitchen. Can you kick in a few bucks? Help us out. Oh, we're, we're calling all the chicken Parmesan alumni. And here's the worst part of it all. It was a ripoff in the first place. $80,000 to study stuff I never use. They made me take a foreign language in college, so I took three semesters of Italian, and guess what? Does not come in handy. <laughs> the only thing it's good for is if, say, I take a girl to, like, an Italian restaurant, I can impress her by talking to the waiter in Italian. Now, I can't say much, but I can say, like, uh, what's the soup of the day? Or, uh, if she orders anything over 20 bucks, tell her you're out of it. Stuff like... <laughs> like that, I know how to... It's hard to learn a foreign... People make fun of Americans because we only speak English, most of us. But the truth is, it's very hard when you speak English to learn a foreign language. You know why? Because people all around the world speak English. So if you go to a foreign country and try to practice the language you've been studying, what usually happens is they, they, they hear your accent, they know you're American, they answer you back in English. <laughs> that, that happened to me. I was in Italy. I tried to speak Italian to a young lady in Rome. She just answered me back in English. She said, no, no, a sex of 300 euro. <laughs> Uh, the reason we speak English in America, I think everybody knows, is because America was founded by people from England. That's why we speak English here. Although we don't speak English like they speak English in England, I assume that they had English accents when they got here. I'm not sure how the English accent became an American accent. I don't know. Maybe the founding fathers were having a meeting. They were like, well, we're starting our own country. We should probably have our own accent. Any ideas? <laughs> uh, ben Franklin, what do you think? Yeah, well, I don't know. What about something like, a <clears throat> dude, what's up? Well... <laughs> I rather like that. I think we'll go with that. I think Spanish is an underrated. Spanish is a beautiful language. It gets no credit. French gets all the credit. Everybody thinks French is the most sophisticated language in the world. That's why when people want to sound intelligent, have you noticed this? They use French phrases. You hear it all the time. They'll be trying to sound intelligent. They'll be like, well, you know, Hemingway was sort of the enfant terrible, if you will, of American literature, dare I say. <laughs> Had a certain joie de vivre that he brought. It was sort of de rigueur at the time. But nobody does that with Spanish. You'll never hear like a professor at Harvard giving a lecture. Well, in turn of the century, the end of the aristocracy was living la vida loca. <laughs> That's it, never here. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>